guys late, but it's gonna be good. I'm sorry. You guys know I'm late. I've explained it in my other videos. I'm booked and busy, but I'm getting a better schedule. I'm working on a different format. I'll be rolling out a lot of stuff next week because like I said before in my previous videos, I wanna get this stuff up to you on time and I don't want to cheat you of quality so that's been my struggle I haven't had the time to give you uh, the quality that I'm pleased with but I'm working on something now which will allow me to do both so none of us will be starving because I have missed you and I know you guys have missed me too so I'm working on it guys I'm working on it. it's all gonna work out trust me anyway let's get into this messy crew from Potomac who I just Giselle is terrible terrible on this show I don't know Giselle personally, but the character that she is portraying on this show, horrid. Let's talk about it. Also, before we get into the review, I do want to apologize for any background noise that you might be hearing. It's the summer in LA and that means it's extra hot because not only do I live in a freaking desert, I live close to the mountain. So it means that we have no in between. It's either really cold or hell hot. So I have my air on. It goes in and out because it's automatic. So sorry if you hear it. I'm not turning it off because I'm already greasy. Okay, naturally. That's why the skin will always say snatch. Get into it work but with this with uh, me sweating and uh, it just it's gonna look a mess on camera so I got to keep it rolling hope it doesn't bother you now let's officially get into it not that relevant but Jamal Bryant has some really strong genes I would never clock Giselle's kids as hers I know they're his but not like they're a mixture of the both of them but I would have to I would have to see them next to both Giselle and Jamal Bryant, but I see Jamal Bryant and them kids. Strong jeans. I wonder, what's his background? Hmm. Uh, so, um, Ashley's little karaoke <laughs> romance song that she was trying to sing to uh, Mr. Burns didn't work. You know what I mean? Like he wasn't, he wasn't phased by it. He wasn't phased by her. He wasn't phased by her mother. But I felt like he was crying. So I don't know. I feel like, in my opinion, this marriage is done. It's done. And I think she probably realizes that. Or I'm hoping Ashley realizes that. And I think she just wants to have a secure bag before she jumps out. So if the kid ain't working, she got to try to find something else. Like, I'm hoping that she's stashing money or something. But Michael seems grimy enough that he would be the type of dude to be watching her. So all of her transactions and everything will probably be probably be watched especially with her mother who was trying to act so gully with him at uh that karaoke thing that she put together or that whatever that jazz festival in that restaurant that she tried to put together but the mother was acting real joe and michael was not feeling it so i hate to say it about somebody's marriage but from what they're presenting to us the viewers on television it looks dead doa dead on arrival get out girl get out and get with that chef that chef is fine and you can't tell me, woman to woman, that you don't sit up in there in that restaurant and just be looking at him like, boy, <laughs> when I get done with Michael, get some young white meat. I ain't hating. Do it. This trip is dope. And this is how I want to travel with my girlfriends. Take note, the bachelorette. This is how you do trips. They are taking a luxury helicopter to the coast of France. money i tried to do something extra i've been watching pose so it's kind of getting to me I, i'm i've been voguing all over the place you know I, I it's it's a mess i'm getting on my family's nerves i apologize <laughs> so let's talk about the sweet gifting i thought it was nice for monique to do that because she had issues with both robin and giselle but i knew that giselle was going to take that room i did not think for one second that she was going to give it to robin and robin you know thinking that giselle was going to be like oh no you take it girl please that's not who she is you know what i mean but then i got mad at robin because i'm just like girl you consistently make yourself number two number three number four the lowest on the totem pole in any and every relationship that she is in. she's number two in this relationship with giselle she's number like five in her marriage like in her home with her kids like it's I just wish some point within her filming on this show that she would make herself number one I feel like her storyline would change her entire attitude towards the other women would change I think that may come 
if this flipping business starts becoming lucrative and then she becomes a little bit more financially independent of Juan and he starts to take a back seat to depending on her financially because to be quite honest with you, they don't make a lot of money on these reality TV shows. The only reality TV stars really making money are um, Needy Leaks, Lisa Vanderpump, and Vicky Gumbelson. Just the OGs. The OGs are because they're like the, um, not only are they the OGs, they are like the godmothers of the show. You know what I mean? They've been there the longest. They also have really big personalities. So they get a nice chunk of check chunk of cash like in the millions i don't think any of them other royals get it i know for a fact that a lot of um especially the new ladies coming in get like five thousand a week and then if you're like a regular you get like anywhere up to 200k and i mean to me that's a lot of money right now but when you think about the money that they have to put into these lifestyles to remain relevant on the show it's not a lot of money so i'm hoping for robin this uh flipping business becomes lucrative so she can start to get on her own feet financially i think that's what's holding her back because she said it in the um last episode um the one i'll talk about later that she grew up with a silver spoon in her mouth so she's always been taken care of i don't think she knows how to take care of herself and i'm hoping that with her making some coin she can start to see things differently and maybe start to make herself number one because honey if you're not taking care of you and nobody else in this family is taking care of you what the hell is gonna happen to you stay woke candace <laughs> candace and chris um guys i don't like how she treats her her fiance i don't like it i don't like it because it's like honey you're on a national platform a worldwide platform like bravo is all over the world at this point uh, shout out to the people viewing me from the UK to the people I got people viewing this from like especially my bachelorette reviews from Dubai like they're Bravo in, in ABC whatever the networks that I review they're all over the place especially Bravo so um this is disappointing that she would talk about her partner the way that she does like she always brings up his imperfections never once mentions anything about her that she needs to change because as soon as she talks to Chris the first thing that she says to him is she takes a shot at his weight and I'm like we all know that there's truth in comedy so that's something about him that bothers her him having a bunch of kids bothers her him not having money bothers her you know what I mean him not having hair bothers her him being you know having a little pot belly bothers her but I just have to be very honest with you guys because I always am I think the one thing that about Chris that doesn't bother Candace that she likes is his skin color I gotta be honest with you because she mentions that a lot and she mentions it as like a badge of honor like he's white but he has a big brown penis or my white husband my white like everything about him that she like beans about it's him being white and i feel like for somebody who grew up in privilege that to her is another check you know check mark of privilege for her so she's looking at oh i can he might not have the money but he has a skin privilege to get around certain things like he can get loans that i probably can't you know what i mean like our kids are going to have a certain privilege because they have a white father and be in you know have this kind of duality of worlds you know what i mean i feel like that is from her and i'm not saying that she's self-hating i don't think it has anything to do or i don't think that her issue is her being black i think it's the fact that she has a partner who has privilege and when you come from those kind of communities marrying into some kind of privilege is priority so i think that's what we're dealing with here and she hates the fact that he just doesn't have everything that in ignorance she think comes with being white you know what I mean? Like, he's a white guy, but his life is sketchy. You know what I mean? His family life is sketchy. He comes from the other side of the tracks. He has the life that um, uh, that you would think a black, a stereotypical, or or the stereotype that a black person would have. You know what I mean? If I'm trying to, I'm trying to explain it. I hope I'm explaining it correctly. But with Candace, I think that's the thing that attracts her to Chris is the fact that he's white. And I don't think that he's the first white man that she's ever dated. I feel like that's been how, you know, she dates and she finally found a white guy who would, in a sense, take a back seat 
And you know, and I don't think Chris is taking a back seat because he's a weak dude. I think he loves her. I really, really do. I think that man loves her because I love how he checked her when she was complaining about her room and you know, looking at the wall. He was like, but you're in the south of France though. Like, what are you doing? So I love how he checks her. I love how he gets her together and he doesn't allow her to walk all over him. But financially, she has to take the lead because she is the partner who has access to money and he does not. So their dynamic is really, really weird. I do think that there is a love there. I think he loves her more. There's nothing wrong with that. Actually, you know, old school, the old school ladies, the mothers of the church say you should always find a man that loves you more than you love him. Like that's how it's supposed to be. I don't know if that's necessarily correct, but you know, that's what I've been told. Um, so anyway, I, I don't think that I think that there's something there, but it is very apparent and very obvious that she has a lot of issues with the fact that he is not a squeaky clean white man, which is what she would prefer. But this white man said yes to her and her behaviors. So she's sticking it out, but he loves her. He does. I, I can see that the dude loves her. I don't know where she is at with him. I do know that she would want him to be better. And it's, it's hard to watch. It really, really is because I'm watching it and I'm thinking about, they're watching this too. How the hell does he feel? But he ain't got no money. He probably not saying nothing. As much as we tune in for the shade and the drama, I love when the ladies have fun and I really enjoy this twerking scene. I did. To me, I thought it was just, sorry if you see like, <laughs> pink stuff in my mouth. I'm eating watermelon because I got to get snatched, but we'll talk about that later. Um, but I liked it. I enjoyed it. I like them having fun. It's, I like moments in this show that are very relatable. You know what I mean? Like a lot of times when I'm watching it, it's like I'm a kid sitting at the adult table watching my aunts just read each other, right? And then there are these moments like this where I was just like, this is me and my girlfriends on a trip, you know? I thought it was cute, I thought it was fun, I really enjoyed it. I like when they have fun more than they bicker, but that's just me. Also, who knew that Ashley could throw it back like that, okay? Mother gets two seconds away from uh, Mr. Burns and the video girl jumps out. I was like, work sis. Delay. So Giselle, in my opinion, was being messy when she asked Karen that question about her perfume. The only reason why I think that is because Giselle's behavior concerning any business venture that Karen uh, is pursuing this season. When she asks about things, there's always something behind it. So for her to do that, I, I don't know, the tone, how she gave it, and that it was very similar to how she has asked Karen other questions in a snide kind of way. In my opinion, she got the response she deserved. However, Karen wasn't ready because Giselle was ready to pop back as soon as Karen popped back. And I'm like, sweetie, in this group, you got to stay ready at all times because you never know who you going to pop off with. And at this point, Giselle and Ashley are leading the shade. Like they will shade you. They will read you. They stay, they, they have like an arsenal of just like reads. They are ready. So I felt bad for Karen because she didn't start it, but Giselle... Woo! Started it and finished it. Stay ready. Question. Why are the women who don't own homes coming for the women who do? And if Karen is renting a home, what's wrong with that? She getting more money. Why are they hating? I don't understand this drama with the homes. I get that they're trying to comfort Karen because she tries to act like she's Miss Perfect and nothing is, you know, she has no issues, everything's okay. And also on these reality TV shows, the cast members don't like when half of them are sharing and then there are other cast members who just get away with not really opening up and revealing themselves. So I understand that as well, but I feel like the, uh, the home drama is tired. It's so tired at this point. She's told you everything that she's going to tell you. So let's just move on. You can pin and poke her all you want. She's not going to reveal that she's homeless or whatever. Maybe she can't afford that mortgage. So they moved to one place and they're written out the other place. Smart, in my opinion. But I'm just like, they got to stop coming at her and caring about this. Because I just don't think that she's going to budge. I don't think, I'm, I'm telling you, they tried it every episode. And as of right now, she still ain't told y'all what's going on. Let it go. It's not like she's not going to come back next season. Because she's interesting. She's good TV. Karen has consistently been the comic relief of this season. They can't let her go. I really hope that Ashley did not out Karen's assistant. Because what the hell does him being gay, like in a bar, have to do with him spilling the tea about her home? You could have just said, oh, I heard it on the street because somebody said that he was, you, 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 
she didn't even have to mention gay bar like it was just a weird you could have said bar why was I don't know I felt like she threw in that gay as like a dig it just I, I didn't I don't know I just felt like you didn't need to be specific in that moment and she was like really specific about where he was at so I'm like did you out him because I don't remember him saying anything about that I don't remember Karen mentioning that and you know like listen we uh, we have a lot of people who are out and proud and in the public eye and living their best lives that's not everybody there are some people who it's really dangerous to mention something like that um they could be harmed they could lose their job like you just don't i don't know i feel like you she should have stayed away from that it just i don't know it didn't sit right with me what did you guys think did you did you pick that up as well i just didn't understand why she was so specific about that yeah because he was at a gay bar okay he was getting a drink. I've been in gay bars. The karaoke is phenomenal. Try it. Oh my gosh. And Monique does not owe anybody in any explanation as to why she upgraded her seat. And she didn't need to upgrade their seats as well. Like, why are y'all playing these games? Production paid for this trip. Production paid for her seat. Monique had the coins to upgrade her seat. She upgraded her seat and she didn't want to be in first class by herself. So she upgraded her friend's seat. What's the problem? Y'all not really friends. Y'all not talking. Y'all co-workers at this point. We, the viewers, already know we just go along with it. Like, we know that this is um this is a contractual trip. We know that it's all being paid for by the show. We know that all the garments you wear that you buy and you send receipts to production to pay for it, to get a use out of it. Like, we get it. We understand. We're along for the ride. But this whole argument about Monique upgrading her seat, uh, D. Oh, hey, dead on arrival. We don't care. Y'all just mad that y'all ain't had a coin to upgrade this seat. You should have said something to production. Production got all them girls coach. Monique was like, I got some coin. I want to sit in the first class because this is the thing. You can't tell production how you want to go, especially if you're not like, to be honest, if you're not on like Beverly Hills or Real Housewives of Atlanta level, like you really can't, Real Housewives of Atlanta specifically, because they bring in the most views. You really can't tell production how you want to travel they get you coached because it's more cost effective like production's job is to make sure that the that the budget remains tight and sometimes that the budget comes under so that the network can give you bonuses so they are not trying to blow all of their money on getting you guys international first class flights that's hella expensive so if you don't have the money to upgrade yourself to coach don't hate shut up mind your business and move on because you just look like a hater being mad that she threw that she flew first class like oh gosh i wish a heifer would try to come at me for upgrading my seat why are you clocking what i do with my money and how i live my best life girl monique is too polite this season i think maybe last season she was too knuck of you buck so now she's trying to come on with like a different kind of vibe and persona especially since she's launching this blog and wants to put it in like upper echelon uh environments and spaces because i've seen her doing like press for it so i can see her doing a little uh makeover hey i'm not hating get more coin secure your own bag that's what you ladies need to do you women that are kept secure your own bag because at the end of the day these dudes they like to upgrade and why on earth is Monique opening up about her marriage to women that do not like her? Like, I do not understand that. And then she's like, oh, Giselle is giving her first lady wisdom. And I was like, there is nothing first lady about anything that she was saying. If anything, she was giving you information or wisdom to take your marriage. You're the only one there with a ring. Who else is married? I don't even, I don't even consider Ashley's marriage. <laughs> Karen and Monique are the only ones who are married. Oh, and Robin. Oh, no, she's not. Yeah, see? Don't listen to none of them broads. Karen is the only one that you need to listen to because she's been giving like a lot of like older woman, older wife wisdom to the younger girls in the cast. So Karen is the only one you need to listen to. Don't listen to no Giselle. That was not first lady, sweetie. That was hater. You all mess around and listen to her. Mess up your marriage. Stay woke. And she gonna end up with him. It happens. Uh, so this episode ends with the ladies, uh, the ladies specifically Giselle and Karen getting into it about every hue beauty and Karen. Grand Dame perfume. It's 
it's it's tired i didn't even care like i just watched them screaming i don't think i digested anything of that story so i'm moving on to the next episode stay tuned